The Super Nintendo Entertainment System is a timeless cornerstone of retro video gaming history. It's a system that many from my generation grew up with, playing Super Mario World, Zelda A Link to the Past, Super Metroid, and a myriad of other classics. Recently, a retro mod inventor named RetroAmp created a kind of genius save mod for SNES games, further preserving your game save data. This mod installs directly onto your game cartridges and utilizes a more modern method for storing your game saves. So heat up your soldering irons and get out the flux, because today I'm going to tell you all about it and show you how to install it. Back at the beginning of the summer, my friend Amp and I connected online to talk about his first ever mainstream retro game mod, an FRAM based save kit for Super Nintendo games. This kit allows your game saves to be stored on a microchip without the need of a battery backup system. Historically, many retro game cartridges have relied upon a low-power SRAM microchip for game saves. And since SRAM is volatile memory, a coin cell battery must be used in these game carts in order to keep this data alive on the microchip. Fast forward over 20 years later now, and a lot of these batteries have begun dying, thus causing a game cart's SRAM to forever lose the game save data that was once stored on it. This is what inspired AMP to create his mod, which negates needing a battery to keep saves alive, and stores the data on an FRAM microchip instead, which is classified as non-volatile memory. This means that your game save data can be preserved on your cartridge for decades, possibly even centuries to come. So in a seemingly endless sea of Game Boy mods nowadays, I decided to put down my Game Boy Color and dive headfirst into learning about the Super Nintendo. Like Nintendo's original NES console before it, the SNES is pretty straightforward. The Super Nintendo's game carts utilize the aforementioned battery-backed SRAM for preserving game save data, and it comes in several different versions and sizes. 16 kilobit, 64 kilobit, and 256 kilobit. These different sizes of SRAM are for the many different save sizes that are used across the vast spectrum of SNES games. Games like Super Mario World use 16K SRAM, where in contrast games like Earthbound use 64K, and Super Mario RPG uses the largest, 256K. AMP's FRAM kit replaces these built-in SRAM microchips with units of the same form factor that don't require any extra unsightly wires or traces. Before we get too far into the nuts and bolts of the install, I first want to mention that at launch, this mod is not intended to be sold just by itself. Rather, AMP would prefer to install these kits himself personally, having customers mail their game cartridges directly to him, and for good reason. This mod can be tricky if you don't have the proper tools for the job. Furthermore, mailing your game cart directly to him allows him to transplant your old save data from the extracted SRAM to the new FRAM module, preserving all of your game's save data just as it was before. Amp mentioned to me that he is open to allowing people to purchase these kits outright, so long as they have the needed tools and experience. That said, Amp very kindly sent me the kit for replacing the SRAM in a 16 kilobit cart, so for this tutorial I'll be installing it into my copy of Super Mario World. Something I won't be doing, however, is moving over my saved game data to the new FRAM module, since I lack the hardware for transplanting the save data. This means that I'll have to start a brand new save file the next time I want to play the game. To find out which version of AMP's FRAM kit is right for your Super Nintendo games, check out the website SNES Central, where you can see which size of SRAM your game cartridge uses. I've included a link to this page in the description below. At the time of the making of this video, AMP has just completed work on the 64 kilobit version of this mod, which now means that his mod supports a majority of the Super Nintendo games out there. His 256K FRAM kit, however, is still taking some more time to complete, due to complications with Nintendo's hardware designs. Nevertheless, he expects to have it completed in the near future and available in SMD and through-hole styles. Be sure to watch till the end of the video to find out how you can get your hands on one of these kits, or get it installed into one of your game carts. For now though, it's time for the tutorial. Let's begin. Here's a brief overview of the tools I recommend for installing this kit. Some ESD safe tweezers, a temperature controlled soldering iron, some 6040 tin lead rosin core solder, some rosin paste flux, a bottle of 70% to 90% isopropyl alcohol or higher, a handful of cotton swabs, a screwdriver with a 3.8mm game bit, and another crucial piece of equipment that I'll be getting to shortly. AMP sent me two of his FRAM units for this video. One is fully assembled for reference, and the other is just a bag of loose parts which I'm going to use to show you the full process for actually building this thing from scratch. Let's get these parts dumped out and see what we're dealing with. The first part we'll look at is the PCB. This bare board is the base that we'll be attaching all of the other components to. 
Following that, we have a basic strip of header pins. This kit comes with two strips of them, one for each side of the board. Here we have the FRAM chip itself, which is where saved game data is actually going to be stored. And then we have the logic IC, which contains instructions for interfacing with the FRAM. At last, we have a tiny surface mount resistor and capacitor. As you can see from the completed unit here, the FRAM chip will go on the top side of the board, with the notch in it facing the surface mounted resistor and capacitor. Then on the other side of the unit, we can see that the logic IC is soldered to the board so that the writing on it is readable with the rest of the text on this side. The final detail to note is the header pins. They are soldered so that the black spacer is located on the underside of the board. This will ensure that we have enough clearance inside of a Super Nintendo game cartridge once this is installed onto a game's board. Once assembled, the game that I'll be installing this FRAM module onto is my copy of Super Mario World. Let's take a look on the inside of it so I can give you a brief overview of what all needs to be done to make this mod work. The first thing that needs to happen to this game is this battery, which powers the SRAM on this cartridge, needs to be removed, since the new FRAM unit doesn't need its own power source to retain data. After that, the next step is to remove the SRAM chip itself. The one in this cartridge is quite curious actually, because it's skinnier than the new FRAM unit replacing it. In fact, here's what it looks like next to the SRAM module from another Super Nintendo game. Fortunately, Nintendo planned ahead with their design of this board, given the many different sizes of SRAM available. Take note of these traces here. They're meant to bridge the contacts on this board so that either a skinny or wide SRAM chip can be installed, or rather conveniently in our case, the new FRAM unit. To get it done, we'll need to evacuate all of the solder from all three rows of contacts shown here. Before I risked ruining my Super Mario World cartridge, I opted to buy this baseball simulator game off eBay for like 6 bucks. Maybe some of you have heard of it. I hadn't since I grew up with the NES and N64, and I figured that I might as well practice this mod on a throwaway cartridge before I filmed the real thing, and I'm so glad that I did. I found out very quickly that I didn't have the right tool for the job. Trying to get by with using only a soldering iron, some desolder braid, a solder sucker, and brute force was certainly not going to cut it. So, frustrated as I was, I threw in the towel and tried to find a way around this that wasn't going to break the bank. In the meantime, I cleaned up my test game by removing the save battery and cleaning the board thoroughly by scrubbing it with alcohol. When I realized that there was no cheap way around this, I finally invested in the proper tool. This is the rather expensive Hakko FR301 desoldering gun, a temperature controlled unit built specifically for removing through hole components from circuit boards. Sure, there are less expensive tools like this out there, but I love Hakko products and I know that they're built to last. Armed with my new toy, I went back to the test board and used my desoldering gun to remove the SRAM chip from it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? That pin was such a pain before. I was completely shocked at just how easy using the proper tool made this process. Anyways, all this to say that if you lack the proper tools, experience, and know-how for performing mods like this one, you probably want to just have Amp do this whole thing for you, instead of buying a standalone kit from him. Now that you know everything about the ins and outs of this kit, let's start assembling things. We'll start on the front side of the board, attaching the FRAM module and the surface mounted resistor and capacitor. After that, on the other side, we'll attach the logic IC and the header pins. Crack out your flux and apply some to the component pads on the front of the board. Then carefully remove the tiny components from their sleeves and place them on the board in the flux you just put down. This technique makes a world of difference when placing and soldering surface mounted components. Same deal with the resistor too. And just keep in mind that these two parts do not have any respect to polarity, so you can mount them backwards or forwards. To apply the solder, get some on the tip of your iron, and then use the flux on the board to get it to wet to the pads and components when you bring it near them. When I filmed this, I hadn't had much experience doing this. I also was using too large of an iron tip for this, so make sure you use one smaller than I am at the start of this. Fortunately, I decided to swap it out for a smaller tip for completing the remaining solder joints. 
Just make sure that the pads on the boards and the contacts on the components both are heated enough to make a good solder joint. Just don't let your iron linger on or near them for more than two seconds, otherwise you risk damaging your workpiece. The next technique I employ is a little unorthodox, as I apply solder to the pads for the FRAM chip before setting the chip in place. I find that this works better when attaching surface mounted chips onto boards when using the drag soldering technique. Once the solder is on the pads, place your chip and line it up so that it won't be bridging any contacts. Then use solder already on your iron tip to begin welding it onto the pads. If it's messy at first, don't worry about it, because you can use the drag soldering technique that I'm showing here in order to isolate each pin on the chip to its designated pad. Make sure to do this on both rows of pins on either side of the chip. With the front side of the unit now complete, flip over the board and now do the same thing on the back side with the logic IC. When placing this chip, make sure that you do so with the writing on it being readable in the same direction as the writing on the board. Then just perform some more drag soldering again to clean up your solder joints. With the board nearly fully assembled, it seems that some solder flowed into the pinholes on it. So here you see me using the Hakko desoldering gun to melt and suck up the solder clogging these holes. After removing the solder, I want to make sure that these holes have been cleared sufficiently for the header pins to be inserted. The initial connection needs to be loose enough, otherwise you might damage the through hole pads if things are not cleared enough. From the looks of it, things seem to be clear, so let's perform a quick cleanup on the board using some isopropyl alcohol and cotton swabs. We'll come back to the F-Frame unit momentarily. For now, let's do some prep work on our game cartridge. As I mentioned before, I'll be using my copy of Super Mario World for this mod. Use a 3.8mm game bit to open up the cartridge and take out the board. The two components we have to remove are the SRAM module and the save battery. For various reasons, the battery should come out first. But when making this tutorial, I was too distracted by my new toy to care, so I started with the save RAM instead. I use my desoldering gun on the back of the board, removing the solder from the bottom two rows of joints that are holding the current SRAM chip in place. I had a bit of trouble with one of the solder joints on this board, requiring me to use my normal iron on it to get the chip loose. Remember not to use force when removing these chips, otherwise you could tear off a solder pad from the board with it. At any rate, the chip eventually comes out. As you can see, this is how our FRAM unit will be installed in the game board. So to finish making room for this, I use the desoldering gun to remove solder from the top row of save RAM pads on the Mario board. If you have any trouble doing this, like I did, add some flux and solder to the problem hole, and then continue removing it. Easy, right? Well, I did quite a bit of fiddling with this board to get things clear, so I used some more alcohol and cotton swabs to remove residual flux and grime from the game board. Now let's remove the save battery. Again, you should probably do this first before removing the save RAM. Anyways, this part is pretty straightforward. Just melt the solder joints on the back side of the game board while simultaneously lifting the battery, tabs and all, away from the opposite side. For the final phase of this mod, we'll now install the FRAM unit onto the game board. This is where those two strips of header pins come in handy. Insert the long side of the pins into the appropriate through holes for the wider save RAM configuration. And then place AMP's FRAM board onto the short side of the pins, with the capacitor and resistor towards the outside edge of the game board. With everything in place, 
apply some flux to where your new solder joints are going to be, and then begin soldering all the parts together. I started on the back side of the game board and worked my way down both rows of pins, applying new solder, and then dragging upward on the pin to finish each one. Once that side is done, flip over the board and then do it all over again on the other side. Make sure you're careful not to bridge any connections from the pins to the surface mounted components. After soldering, clean up your workpiece again with some alcohol and cotton swabs, removing and dissolving any residual flux. Here's the finished product. Now place the game board face down into the back half of the game cartridge shell, and then replace the front half of the cart with screws. And there you have it! My Super Mario World cart has now been modified with FRAM for game saves. So let's go test this thing out and see how it works. After loading up the game in my Super Nintendo, you can see that my cartridge doesn't detect any saved game data, which is to be expected since the FRAM now installed on the cartridge is completely blank. So I start a new game and get to the Overworld screen to make sure everything is working properly. After that, I turn off the system and wait a few moments, and then turn it on again. Once I press start, you can see that the save file is now occupied by some data, which means that the mod is working as intended. It looks like this is complete! With installation included, AMP plans to sell these kits for $20 to $25 a piece, and the buyer pays shipping both ways. To purchase one of these kits or get it installed in one of your game carts, reach out to Amp directly via his Instagram page, at RetroAmp. I put a link to his page in the description below, so go check it out. Also, be sure to follow his page to stay in the know about further developments of this mod. He doesn't have a big fancy website yet, or an online store that you can buy these through, since this is his very first mod that he's created. From this experience of mine though, I can say that I'm very interested to see where Amp takes his tech in the future. If you liked this video, please click the like button below, and consider subscribing to my channel to see more videos like this in the future. And while you're at it, ring that bell to get notified whenever I post something new. I want to thank you all again for watching everyone. You all stay awesome, and I'll see you in my next video. See you guys!